The Fed minutes giving the markets more to think about as the central bank plans to reduce its balance sheet and signals half point rate hikes are ahead. Steve Leisman joins us right now with more. Um, Steve, the minutes, I guess, hammering home what the markets have been slowly coming around to the last several weeks. Yeah, it's like this gradual wake up. What, what, what the minutes showed, Becky, was this widespread support among members for what amounts to, when you put it all together, one of the most aggressive tightening cycles since at least 1994. Uh, here are the main points that we got. Balance sheet runoff, we got those details we were looking for. Up to $95 billion per month. We'll give you some details on that in a second. 50 basis point hikes in future meetings could be appropriate. They want to move to neutral expeditiously. Uh, that's, say, 2 2.5%. And they'll do more tightening if inflation does not behave. Here are the details of the balance sheet. $95 billion of capped runoff per month. They'll allow it to run off by that amount. That's, you know, maybe $10, $15 billion more than the average uh, street expectation. And that's going to break down in allowing $65 billion of Treasury, $35 billion of mortgage-backed securities to run off. They may have trouble hitting that mortgage number. Uh, they'll reach this level, in other words, get up to those caps in three months. Uh, and they might sell mortgages uh, sometime after the runoff is well underway because they want to get to a pretty much Treasury-only balance sheet. The plan has to be formally adopted at the May meeting, but... That looks pretty certain, given the widespread support expressed in the minutes. Uh, Morgan Stanley writing, quote, the overall tone of the minutes showed substantially more concern among policymakers around upside inflation risks compared to uh, limited discussion about growth and risk to the growth outlook. The minutes also said most Fed officials, they would have hiked by 50 in March, but didn't because of concern over the uncertainty created by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So now the question turns to, is this aggressive plan enough to rein in inflation? The minutes come less than a week before the government set to release the March Consumer Price Index on Tuesday. Early forecasts showing it could be well over 8%. Becky? Hey, Steve. I, this has been kind of the strangest quick inversion that, that we've seen in a very long time. And I'm not talking about Treasury yields. I'm talking about the idea that everybody on the street, the smartest people on the street, were saying the Fed was way behind the curve. They really needed to do more. Um, and the Fed was doing nothing. In fact, the Fed was still buying more, adding to the balance sheet as recently as last month. Now, all of a sudden, they've changed their minds. Uh, it's a 180. They're going the opposite direction. They want to get rid of everything. And suddenly, some of the smartest people on Wall Street are starting to say, oh, wait a second, this is going too fast. What the heck happened? It's a, <laughs> it's a good question. Um, I hadn't quite thought about that. It is true that uh, over time, the, the Fed came to realize it was behind the curve and <clears throat> stayed too long on the issue of, of certainly quantitative easing. You're right. They were buying assets up to March. Um, I, I think there's maybe you want to call it a cat and mouse game where the street was saying the Fed needed to do more in general. Uh, but you have to forecast two things, right? There's the idea of what the Fed should do, and then you got to forecast what the Federal Reserve will do. Um, and, and the Fed has been evolving, and the street's view of the Fed has been evolving. It's not perfect, but it does happen over time. You say that, Becky, but take a look at the two-year, and you can see that the, the two-year has, has gone up, which is, I think, the best sort of easy indicator of where the street thinks the Fed is going. That's, you know, climbed pretty sharply. The Fed has been successful at bringing forward a lot of tightening into the market right now. Where are we now? We're at 240. Um, it's been as high as 250. Uh, and, and the 10-year has not risen quite as much, but it's up. So, I mean, I, I think there's general, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, agreement here on where things are going near term. This idea of getting up to 2 2.5% by the end of the year, I think that's kind of baked in. Uh, yeah. and, and then there's substantial questions about whether or not uh, they go how much further they go after that.